In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a hillshade using a digital elevation model. You can see first I've gotten a DEM from the web. I got this from the USGS Seamless server online. And I've inserted it here, and you can see that it has a range between 26 and 801. And I believe that those values are in meters. So it's going between 26 meters above sea level and 801 meters above sea level up here in the mountains. So now that I've gotten this DEM, I can turn this into a hillshade using ArcGIS' Spatial Analyst tool. The first thing we need to do is actually turn Spatial Analyst on, or make sure that it's turned on. So I'm going to go up to Customize and Extensions, where it'll give me a list of all of the extensions that I can use. And you can see I've got the Maplex extension turned on from when we were doing labels last week. I'm just going to make sure that the Spatial Analyst extension is also turned on. I'll click that, and then hit Close. So now I can open up the toolbox, which is where all of my tools are stored, and I'll close data management and open up spatial analyst tools down here at the bottom. And then under surface down here at the bottom is a hillshade tool. If I double click on that, it'll open up this dialog, and my input raster is going to be my digital elevation model. My output raster, I'll say, call that hillshade. Save. And then the azimuth and the altitude are optional. These are for the lighting source. And so the azimuth is going to be the direction of the lighting source. 315 degrees is 45 degrees off of vertical up here in the northwest corner. And that's sort of the, the usual direction for light to be coming in a hillshade. Uh, and in fact, the hillshade will look odd in many cases if the light isn't coming from that direction, even though the sun actually would never shine from that direction in this part of Vermont um, because we're in the northern hemisphere. The sun would always be coming from somewhere down here uh, in the southern part. But if we were to shade it from that direction, our hill shade would actually look inverted, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. The altitude is the angle that the sun is at on the horizon, and so 45 degrees is going to be giving us sun that is from right between the horizon line and, and vertical. It's going to be right in between those two points. Um, we'll leave it at 45 degrees. This Z factor is a coefficient that relates the reference units of our DEM to its value units. For the time being, I'm going to leave that as 1, but that's actually not what we'll want in the long run, and uh, you'll see why in just a second. So I click OK and the hillshade will work for a little while. Depending on how large an area you have, hillshading may actually take a few minutes to accomplish. So now the hillshade tool is finished, and we'll close it, and it's added the hillshade to our table of contents. And you can see that our hillshade looks pretty bad. Not only is it very dark, but we've got all this terracing effect where you can see the DEM was actually derived from contour lines. Um, and then the flat areas look really grainy. Uh, and it, it, basically there's just a, a lot of contrast between the sides of these slopes that are facing the sun and the, the sides that are facing away from them, which are darker. The reason for this is that our DEM that we made this from is actually still in a geographic coordinate system. So its reference units are decimal degrees, while its value units are meters. And this relates back to that z-factor specification in the hillshading dialog. We, in order for the hillshading to work properly with the z-factor of 1, or a coefficient of 1 relating those two units, we need to have the reference units and the value units be the same thing. So in order to do that, I'm just going to delete this hillshade that we just made that's doesn't look too good. In order to get the reference units and the value units to be the same thing, we need to reproject our DEM. So in order to reproject this DEM, I'm going to come over to the data management tools and then come down to projections and transformations. And then under raster, there's a tool called project raster. Open that up. And then use our DEM as the input raster. You can see that its current coordinate system is this GCS North American 1983. Our output data set maybe we'll call project DEM. Save. And then the output coordinate system, we'd like to be something that has reference units, which are meters. And so let's just use this Vermont State Plain coordinate system that our roads already have. The reference units for that are in meters. So we'll click on this little button to choose a spatial reference system. And we can just import that spatial reference system from our mid roads. So there's our NAT83 State Plain Vermont. OK. The resampling technique for this case should be set to bilinear or cubic because we have a continuous surface. And we'll leave the output cell size as to be calculated by this tool. OK. So it'll think for a little while while it's projecting the raster. 
And when the tool's done working, we'll get a projected DEN that looks exactly the same as the one that we already had. It has the same value units, but it's just projected in state plane using meters as opposed to being projected in a geographic coordinate system using decimal degrees. So now let's redo our hillshade process. So we'll go to Spatial Analyst and our surface to hillshade and use this new projected DEM. Hillshade 2, we'll call it. Keep the azimuth and the altitude, and now we can leave that z factor as a coefficient of 1, and it's actually going to have a 1 to 1 relationship between the reference units and the value units. We'll hit OK. And when the tool is done working, we'll close this. You can see it's a much nicer looking hillshade. The contrast is realistic, uh, where the flat areas are mid tone grays, and the steeper areas are white, with the backsides of those steeper areas being darker because the light is being blocked by that relief as it is projected from the upper left hand corner. You can see from this hillshade that there's actually an artifact of sort of tiling of this DEM. This tile right here is a much rougher surface than any of these around here and that's just a matter of the way that the data was collected and potentially processed by the USGS after collection. The other thing I want to show you about is inverting hillshades. Right now this hillshade is symbolized properly so that light values are these high values and the darker ones are the low values and that makes it look like the light source is coming from the upper left hand corner. If we right click on that layer and go to properties and symbology, if we were to come down and say invert that color ramp, we'll apply that. This has the effect of making all these mountain areas look like they're depressions rather than being popped up. Uh, and in general, our eye just doesn't sort of understand the way that a hillshade works with this inverted color ramps. So you want to make sure that your map is making your mountains feel like they're popping away from the surface.